So in today's video, I'm going to show you step by step how to paint this cute Halloween illustration in Procreate. I think you'll be able to follow this with any brushes you have, but you can find a list of everything I used in the description, along with a free sketch and color palette. As you can see, I've already placed in the sketch and the color palette in here like this. I won't cover the sketching process I used for this video, but I do have a few other videos that explain it pretty well, and I'll add them at the end of this one. And to start painting, I'm going to ignore the scooter and the pumpkin for now and just focus on the woman and the cat. And I want to choose some kind of light tone to add a background wash that covers both of them. And usually that's going to be the skin tone. So I think that'll work for this one too. So I'm going to grab the skin tone color and use the abstract round and create a wash like this that covers both of them. And after that, I'm going to grab the eraser brush, which is set to the fine liner pen. And I'm going to use it to cut back my wash so it matches the sketch. And that looks pretty good. Next, I'm going to follow this same process and fill out all the other elements. I'll show you the hair real quick as an example and then I'll fast forward through it. So I'll do a long press to grab the hair color. I'll make a blank layer. It's really important that everything is on its own separate layers for now. For the brush, I'll use the abstract round again and just fill out a loose wash. And after that, I need to cut it back to match the sketch. But I have a problem that happens quite often. I can't really see my sketch because the hair is too dark. So just temporarily, I'll lower the opacity of the hair layer. Then I can see my sketch lines and I can easily cut it back. And of course, once it's finished, I'll set the layer opacity back to 100. I'll make a new blank layer and I'll continue on with this process and paint the rest of the elements. And once that's done, I can open the layers panel and kind of show you what this looks like. So everything is pretty much on its own layer and all these pieces sort of fit together like puzzle pieces. But I did put the cat and the boots on one layer because they were the same color. Now, if I turn off the sketch just temporarily, you can see that in some cases, the pieces don't fit together perfectly and there might be a little bit of a gap. So what I'm gonna do is kind of warp the jacket and bend it down to fill that gap. So I wanna make sure the jacket is selected. Then I'll go to my adjustments, liquify, and I'm just gonna use push, and I'm just gonna bend it down and fill in that gap. I think I might wanna do it a little bit up here as well, but I think that looks pretty good. And once all the kind of main elements here are filled out like this, I'd like to move on and do the textures next. Now this illustration is pretty simple. We only have to do a hair texture and then a kind of pattern on the jacket. So for that, I'll turn the sketch back on and I'm going to do the textures on layers above the elements. So for the hair, I'm going to make sure the hair layer is selected. I'll make a blank layer above it and I'm just going to use a very light tone and a scratchy brush. You can use any brush you want, but I'm going to use the little pine brush in the drawing tab and I'm just going to use it to add a kind of linear hair texture. And after that, I can kind of adjust the opacity of the texture, set it to a point where it looks good, and then I'll pinch and merge it together with the hair so it's together on one layer. And now for the jacket. So I'll make sure the jacket is selected. I'll make a blank layer above it. And this time I'm gonna use a different scratchy brush. It's still in the drawing tab. It's called Evolve. And I'm just gonna use a dark green color and do some stripes. And just like before, I can adjust the opacity of the layer, but I want it to blend a little bit differently. So I'm gonna change the transparency mode to multiply. And I'll also pinch it together with the jacket so it's on one layer as well. And once all the textures are finished, I can move on and do the shading. And I think I can fast forward through most of it, but I wanna show you the shading on the jacket as an example of my technique. So I'm gonna make sure the jacket is selected then I'm going to grab the selection tool, set to freehand, and I'm just going to kind of draw the areas where I want there to be a shadow. I'll reconnect it, and it's as simple as just darkening it using the brightness slider. And I'm going to continue just like this using the selection tool and do all the shadows.
Now, in some cases, you might want to have a kind of soft edge to the shadow. So to do that, I'm going to make sure the element here with the shadow on it is selected. Then I'll change my brush back to the watercolor brushes and to the water blender. And I can use that to blend the edge of the shadow. And once the textures and the shading is finished, we can move on and start adding some details, starting with the face. And that's going to be on its own layer. So I'll make a blank layer above everything so far. And I'm going to start with the ears and the nose. So for the brush, I'm going to go back to the abstract round and I'm just going to fill those in. Then I'm going to switch my brush to the water blender again. And I'm going to use it to blend the transition of the ear and also the edge of the nose. And if you want, you can grab the eraser brush and kind of use it to refine the shape of the nose a little bit. And for the rest of the details, I'm going to switch to the fine liner pen and use that to do the eyes and the mouth. And continuing on this same layer, I'm going to do the face details on the cat as well, but I can't see my sketch in this case. So I'm just going to temporarily lower the opacity of the cat layer. And then I'll continue with the uh, fine liner pen and do those details. And for the last details I need to add, I'm just going to use the fine liner pen at a very small size and add some faint lines kind of outlining the fingers. And once the woman and the cat are all finished, I'm going to merge all the layers for them onto one and then move on and do the scooter. And that's going to be on its own blank layer. And just for now, so I can focus on the scooter, I'm going to turn these two off. And just like before, I need to fill out a kind of background wash for the scooter. And this was actually all one continuous stroke. I just varied the pressure and that's why it has some darker and lighter areas. Next, I'm going to switch to the eraser brush, which is still set to the fine liner pen. And I'm going to use that to cut this out following a similar technique that we used at the beginning of this video. And since this scooter doesn't really have any texture, I can move right onto the shading. And this time, instead of using the freehand selection tool, I'm actually going to paint on the shadows. So I'll make a layer above the scooter. I'm going to continue with the abstract round again. Pretty much the same scooter color, maybe just a tiny bit darker. And I'm going to use it to kind of fill in some shadows in these sections. And after that, I'll make another blank layer above the scooter and I'll use a lighter blue tone to do the highlights. And if you want to soften some of these highlights, you can switch to the water blender brush and smooth them out a little bit. But I like the hard edge effect, so I'm going to make sure I leave some of those behind. And now that the scooter is totally finished, I'm going to merge all three layers for it together onto one. And I'm going to move on to the remaining details. And those are going to be on their own blank layer above everything. And I'm going to quickly fill in the colors for these elements using the same techniques we've covered so far. And for the face on the pumpkin, there's a little bit of a trick I want to show you. So I'll make a blank layer above the pumpkin. I'm going to change my brush to the fine liner pen because it's totally opaque. And I'm going to use a slightly lighter version of the pumpkin color to fill in all these details. Then after that, I'm going to turn off the sketch. I'm going to make a duplicate of the pumpkin face details. And I'm going to shift the brightness of the duplicate to make it darker. There we go. Then I can use the arrow tool. And I'm going to position the darker copy here, kind of off to one side. There we go. Then I'll use the eraser brush to clean up all the overlapping uh, pieces here. I think this one turned out pretty good. So I'm going to merge all the layers for the pumpkin face together onto the pumpkin layer. And finally, now that all the parts of this illustration are finished, I can turn off the color palette in the sketch, turn everything else back on, and there's one final trick I want to show you. So for that, I'm going to make sure all the layers for the illustration are selected. I'm going to grab the arrow tool, set to distort, and I'm going to skew this forward just a little bit. And just like that, our illustration is all done. If you think I've earned it, please give this video a like. 
If you wanna learn more about how I make the sketches and color palettes I use in all my videos, I have a lot of videos that explain it, and I highly recommend checking out these two next.